hello youtube welcome back to my channel so in today's tutorial we're going to go ahead and write the logic for for to, to create the crowd functionality for product like create uh, products the user to be able to create products delete products and stuff like that so if you're new to this series well this is a, a, a python uh, e-commerce api series we're trying to build an e-commerce api using a uh, python fast api library for the back end so ba uh, basically in the last tutorial, we have written the logic for users to be able to upload their different products uh, pictures like the uh, pictures for different products and also the users were able to upload their profile images for their different business so there'll be multiple users each user can have his own online business but all on the same e-commerce uh, e e e platform so they can have uh, multiple businesses so each business will have a profile picture and other profile information so that, that's what you have done last time so in this tutorial for, for example if you just log in right you're going to return the user's profile info right now you're not re returning the user's profile image so that's, let's go ahead and actually try to do that so I'm just going to go ahead and actually write the logic to return the user's profile uh, image. So what I'm going to go, I'm just going to create a variable here called lo logo. What you're going to be going, simply going to do is, what you're simply going to do is, we're going to get business uh, dot logo. So we're going to get the logo of that specific business. And then now we need to create a path to that uh, that uh, product. So we're going to call it logo path. And this is going to be the path on our specific server. So it's going to be localhost at port 8000, right, for slash uh, static slash images for slash uh, uh that's all we need and then we're going to add to it the logo that we just got here so the logo this is going to return to us the, the name of that business uh the, the name of that uh logo profile of that specific business so for example maybe that uh, we have used hex token right so maybe we have something just some gibberish like this right dot uh png right maybe that's their profile uh, image name that you have stored in our server so it will be something similar to this if you don't understand what you have uh, what this part you can watch the last tutorial we have covered this in the last tutorial so it's going to be something like this now we are creating an absolute part to it on our server so it's going to our local host uh, our local host at about 8000 first slash static which is just going to be this static file first slash uh, static folder instead of there we have another folder called images that's where all these images are stored so plus that logo which will be something like this so just add that to it and then we get the uh, the full part of that specific image so that's what we're going to do uh, that's what we simply mean by that so now i'm going to return this to the front end and this is going to this is going to be a uh, logo uh, underscore path so that's basically so this if you now go to the uh, front end right and you can you can get now get back this image so let me just bring up my uh my uh terminal here make sure that your server is running so i'm just going to type in uvcon uvcon and then it's going to be main and then up I call it up so i'm going to start it i'm not going to be using the the reload uh, flag so i'm just going to start it normally so i'm here so i'm just going to get a refresh to it just refresh it so now you can see we have in here the user login info right this is the route name that we have we have specified here right so that's the route name right here right user underscore logo so I'm going to uh, go in here, click on this, and then try to authenticate myself. So secret, and then hit authenticate, close this. So now you can see now I'm authenticated, and uh, uh, the lock is there now. Lock. If you know about authentication, we did authentication using JWT token. So if you would have enjoyed that video, go back and watch that video in the series. So it will really help you. Okay, great. So now I'm just going to execute this. So now you can see now I have my profile info right here. So I'm going to copy that. Uh, copy it properly make sure i just copy it without the code so if i can do that copy it without the code so now you can see i'm just copying so now you can see we have localhost 8000 for slash static which is our folder instead of that we are going to an images folder and then you can see this now the hexly generated token that you have generated in the previous tutorial so i'm going to get that and i'm going to paste it here and then hit refresh now you can see we got back that image now i have uploaded the same uh, images for the pr for the businesses so if you are that's why you, you see the image not change but this is the actual the image you can see it's right here so it's actually that image right there so if i have another business with a different profile image then that profile image will be here so you can see we have all resized it and again if you are curious about how we did all of this you can watch the last tutorial we covered all of this in the last tutorial so there is just that all my prof all my business that i have i have been using this image for their profile uh, images that i got from pixel so thanks to pixel by the way so uh this is just that's why I, you can you didn't see the image in but trust me that's actually actually the image so if you have been following along with this series you can confirm that it's actually uh the image okay so great so now that you have done with that let's quickly now jump into the crowd functionality for our api so i'm gonna bring my visual studio code so you can write that crowd functionality uh right here so uh, i'm gonna just write it here so i'm going to write it uh, here so this is gonna be crud 
uh, functionality analytics okay so now what right, so we're going to do we're going to start with the uh, get the one for getting uh for for, for uploading product so this is going to be app dot post so it's going to be a post also what we're going to do is uh, for slash product so we're going to say uh product products uh products this is going to be uh you can just call it products just like that so it's going to be fine you can just call it products what you're simply going to do is create an in a, a sync await function here it's going to be dev uh then it's going to be add underscore new underscore product or you can just call it add product whatever you want so we're going to get the product from the front end and the product is going to be product by identic in okay so product by identic in again if you don't understand these things about first api what's by identic in and all of that you can simply watch uh, my tutorial on uh by identic and models uh, using tortoise orm okay so i have that tutorial up there so now before the pr person can add the products first of all we have to know that the user is authenticated uh, authenticated and probably properly logged in so first of all we need to now get that to make sure that's happening so we're going to now use uh going to get the currently logged in user which is just going to be user by identic and this is going to be of type depends okay so it's going to be depending on get uh current user okay so this is going to return to us the currently logged in user so this will make sure that the, the user making the request is authenticated or properly logged into our system because you can upload products if you're not logged in because how will we know that uh, uh who the who, who is uploading the product or who the uh, which business to assign the products to right so we need you to be logged in in order to authenticate you and to verify that you have an account and uh, you are al allowed to upload those products so i'm going to just create uh so i'm going to create a variable here called product and this is just going to be product you're going to convert this into a dictionary so provide product.dict and then you're going to say uh you're going to pass in here uh exclude exclude uh exclude and set so the exclude and set you're going to simply set that to be uh true this means that you're going to exclude the fields that have, have not been uh, provided okay so now uh before we now make sure that we upload this to our uh, 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 database right so uh, what I'm, I'm simply thinking is that the people can have discounts for different products so on uh, on creating the pro uh, on create uploading the product info they can specify the discount for that specific product now what we're going to do we're going to calculate this discount ourselves because we don't want the users to be able to manipulate this value so what we're going to ask the user for is the original price of the product and the new price or the discounted price at which they are selling it for and then we'll calculate the discount uh, disc uh, discount uh percentage ourselves okay so one thing we have to deal with is you have to avoid division uh, uh division uh, by zero error okay so i'm just going to put in a comment avoid uh division division error uh, error by uh, zero okay so we're going to avoid any division error by zero so i'm going to write an if statement to do that for us so this is simply this is uh this product variable is the dictionary so i can access the fields and these fields are the fields that we created in our model so if i go to models you can see we have products so these are the pro the fields that i'm going to be using uh, in here okay so i'm going to get the field called uh, original price so original price so if i come in here you can see i have uh, one for original price let me see here so you can I have that field for original price so i'm just going to copy that and then paste it in there okay so original price if original price i'm going to check if the original price is is uh is uh, greater than uh we can say if original price is greater than zero means that the original price must be greater than zero if that's true then what's the same we're going to do we're going to now say product uh product and then you're going to get percentage discount which is again another field there so i'm just going to come in here get the field for percentage discount copy that and then paste it in here make sure it's a within uh quotes because this product here you have converted into a dictionary and if you understand how dictionary uh dictionaries work in python then you must be we must be familiar with that so i'm just going to uh, do product and then i'm going to get the original price so the original price is this one so let me just use double quotes uh, since i have uh, i've already started using double quotes so i'm going to paste it the original price is just going to be make sure that you uh, watch out for these parentheses okay make sure that you get it right because of uh, i'm using it for operator precedences to avoid any issues so just like basic board math uh, board mass uh, from high school so i'm going to get the new price so this new price again is another field uh, in here so i'm going to get the new price field uh, which is just going to be here and this is going to be passed in by the user so i'm going to get that and then i'm going to now divide all of that divide all of this by a uh, product by the product uh, the product original uh, original price so original so i'm just going to paste in here original price okay so copy that and then make sure you paste it in here 
so paste it in there so what the same we're going to do is you're going to get the old price we find the difference between the prices divided by the original price times a hundred percent to get the percentage discount okay so i hope my math is right if i'm wrong can you leave a comment in the comment section below i don't know <laughs> but I, I highly doubt that i'm wrong okay so yeah that's basically the math so so product uh underscore obj so i'm going to create a product object and this product object is just going to be a way to await this process await this and i assume we're going to do a uh, product product uh product dot uh we're going to say create so if you are very if you're not very familiar with fast api uh well i have a, another series on fast api that explains this uh, in a fundamental way it's called fast api we're, we're building an inventory management system using fast api and react so you can go and watch that video i explain how all this works in depth so what you're simply doing here we are creating an object of the product and you're going to say the business that uh, which the product be belongs to so you're going to say business is going to be uh the user that's all we need to do so that's all and this is a result of the foreign relationships that our product tables have with the other tables so you can see it has a relation with the business table so just providing the business uh, as the currently uh, as the user so you can also get the business if you want directly but uh, this will also work okay so now great so now i'm going to do product uh underscore obj which is going to be our product object and this is going to be a way to going to away this process what i'm going to do is going to say product dot identic okay so i'm going to get product this is actually product uh product uh identic okay product identic dot from uh from uh total is orm so what i'm going to do is uh pass in our product object so i'm going to pass in our product object right there so this is actually product obj great so what simply this simply does is that here we have just accepted the the values this we have just got the value from the user which is going to be passed in uh, to the http uh, and then you're converting that into a python dictionary and then you're doing the processes of calculating the discount of the product and then assigning the, the percentage discount to the percentage discount field which is going to be a field in our, our database okay so just assign it to our dictionary the uh, that specific key of our dictionary and then you have created an object so i've just created an object that you're going to be saving in our database now to save it in our database this is the syntax for our tortoise orm okay so if you don't you're not very familiar with tortoise orm just go and read the documentation a bit but what you're simply doing in here is just creating an object uh, of orm type of the of the pro of the product model of the product model you're just creating an object of the product model and the information of that specific product is the one that the user has provided which included the updated uh, percentage discount field that we calculated up here and then you're saying that the owner of that specific product right so it's going to be the currently logged in user okay and then you're simply now uh, saving this into creating uh, uh saving this into our database that's basically it okay so now this is going to create it and save it to our database now we have just created uh, uh you just retrieve that from the database created created we created a we created a, uh, an, uh, a python object that can we can return back to the user so this is going to create and save the data the data in our database now this is going to take that information right the, the product object uh and then convert it into a format that we can send over via http uh, request okay and this is basically this is just a json format so it just this will create it and save in the database let me explain one more one more time and then this is going to take the uh the object uh, the the saved object which is this is going to return an object we are going to take the saved object convert it it into a format that we can tr transfer it over a http uh, request in this case it's just a python dictionary so it's just a, 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 a total is orm object that we can transfer over uh, over http okay or https https so i'm just going to return uh that there so i'm going to return and this is going to be a uh, status so passing in the status and the status is going to be okay so everything went fine and then you're going to pass in data and the data is simply just going to be our product uh, the, our product object here so that you have just got right so it's going to be product obj right there so great so this just creates and saves the database this takes it and converts it to a format that you can transfer over http you can think of it like a dictionary i'm not actually sure if it's actually a dictionary but you can read that on the official documentation in case you are curious about it and then you can just simply return that request uh, to the user and then else if that didn't work out you're just going to return an error so let me just get back uh, where we can return an error here it's going to return a http or we can just now return a normal uh, this so i'm just going to copy this 
and we'll just copy this whole line so copy that whole line and paste it here and then this is going to say is going to say uh status is going to be uh, error and then the yeah you're just going to return the status of error to the user that's all so if there's if uh, this functionality fails being that the the original price I is less than zero right or if is if the original price is equal to zero or less than zero then we'll just return the the logic here. Or even here we can improve this logic okay uh, if you check them you can also improve this logic what if they also specified uh the or the new price as zero then this wouldn't be uh a div a di zero divided by zero i don't know if that's a division error by zero but you can just research that and then input in your own logic okay so that's basically it for uh creating a product on our database on our on our front end so how the user can basically uh, uh, post in a new product so so i'm going to now go to the app uh to the get so now let's write the get function so what is simply going to do is just going to be for slash uh, product so if you go to this route for slash product and you have made a get request then you're going to call this async function in python and this async function what is simply going to do you're going to call this uh function uh dev get underscore product so get product what is simply going to do is first of all you don't need to be authenticated in order to get the product because imagine that i'm a user right and i go to the front end right and it and our front end makes a I go to the website right and our front end we a react app or a run dealer or view app makes a request to the api now that user who is going to the a, to the e-commerce site is not necessarily registered on that e-commerce site or does not owe a business or does not need to be logged in in order to see those products that's why we don't need anyone to be logged in on, in order to retrieve those products because we're just retrieving those products it's not uh, like you're going to update them or do anything uh, fishy you're just viewing those products so we don't need to you to be authenticated authenticated in order for you to get those uh products so just going to just return a response this is going to be uh we're going to await this process we're going to be fetching something from the database so this is going to be product product identic so this is going to be product identic dot uh from underscore tortoise or uh, tortoise orm so you're going to get this from tortoise orm and then we're going to pass in here and then uh so we're going to say products dot all just like that so that's basically it so uh products at all and this product at all is the name of our products database okay so let me check if uh, it's actually called product not products okay so this product is the name of our model our product model this one right here so what i'm simply going to do is that you're going to uh product dot all which is going to return everything from the products database and then you're using uh product dot identic dot from total is orm which is going to convert it into a format which is not a python object or a total is orm object but a format that can be transferred via http uh, response or re uh, responses so we're going to just return that uh, response to the user and uh, this is going to be uh, status and the status is going to be uh, okay and then we're going to pass in data and the data is just going to be a uh, response great so that's all we need to handle that uh, get request so now that we have that in place now let's write the logic to get a specific product so this is going to return all the products in our database right we, we didn't apply any paginations here but in the future we can go ahead and actually apply any pagination but for now we're just returning all the product now let's imagine that the user wants a specific product maybe if you click on uh on a product on the front end you want to make a request to the back end to get details of only that specific product right so we're going to the right that row so it's going to be upload gate again and then this is going to be product and now how do we know which product the user wants right each product has an id right so i'm just going to show you how to write a dynamic route so this is how we write a dynamic route meaning that the value id is going to be changing okay it's not constant so it's a dynamic value because the user can pro pro this value depends on what the user provided or what the front end made the request with or what the user clicked on the front end right so it depends on the product and each product has a different id so we're going to make that dynamic so that's how you make a dynamic url uh, in fast api so this is going to be an async uh, function uh, we're going to say get uh, underscore product okay this could be, so the name of the function do not matter you can see the name of the function do not matter what matters is the routes okay so again you don't also need the you don't also need the the user to be authenticated in order to get a specific uh, product right so you don't you don't need the user to be authenticated in order to get a specific product okay so what we can we're simply going to do in here is i'm going to just get the product so product is going to be a weight and then this is going to be a product product uh, product get we're going to get and we're going to pass in our uh, id as the 
as the id as the id now we need to accept this id from here so we need to say in the id is going to be of type int create so now the id will be passed in here so the id from the route will be passed into this function so we need to have a, a, a an argument to a parameter to accept it and then you can now use it inside of your function so i'm just going to say await uh, product dot get and then provided the id of that specific product so now that we have the product you can get the business related with that product because we're going to provide every information about that specific product including the products uh products profile image and stuff like that so product dot uh, business so we're going to get uh this actually business okay so they get the product business the business related with that product and then we're going to get we're going to await this we're going to await this this is going to be a uh, business dot owner okay so we're going to get the owner of that business the reason why we're getting all of this information is that we want to use this information to provide information about the the owner of that business the, the business logo and the product logo and all those stuff like that so we want to provide all that information about that specific product okay so great so now i'm going to say uh, response uh, response is going to be um response is going to be await you're going to await this response so it's going to be product uh product underscore pythetic uh dot product pythetic dot uh from total is orm so this total is orm this is going to be single now don't just type in from uh, from uh, this is going to be uh sorry product pythetic dot from uh from query set underscore single okay so make sure you watch out for that uh uh, uh convention okay so this is going to be product dot get and then we're going to say id is just going to be the product id from there okay so great so that is going to get us a response of that specific uh product so now that we have that and i'm, I'm not now going to go ahead and actually uh, actually we can just actually use this product information that we have just got from there so why they uh, need to retrieve it again from a database so you just say uh product which is just the product that we have got here so we have just stored it in here there's no process of doing this in here as well okay so i hope uh, it made sense okay so now that we have that i'm simply going to now go to uh, return i'm going to return uh, i'm going to return and then i'm going to return something here this is going to be a uh, status and the status is going to be okay since everything went well and then i'm going to provide uh, data and the data is just going to be uh, uh, it's going to be another dictionary and the data is going to be data is going to be a dictionary about our product so we're going to go product uh sorry 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 actually here so i'm going to bring my cursor here make sure i'm in the right place so this is going to be product uh product underscore details and the product details is just going to be a, a response a response object which is just going to be the details about the specific product uh, which is going to also going to be a dictionary in itself so business uh business uh business underscore detail details which is just going to the details of that specific business so let me explain to you clearly so the product details is going to have all the details of the product include the product uh let me just show you the model here it's going to have all the product image the date uh, of of expiration date uh all this information is going to be pro is going to be provided in that they are by the user is all going to be stored in this right here so it's going to have the profile name sorry the product name the discount the original price the new price and all of that information is going to be stored in this uh, product details okay which is going to be a dictionary referring to that specific product so now the business detail i'm going to return the business offering this product so we're going to have the name of that business which is just going to be uh business uh dot business underscore name so it's the name of that specific business and then you're going to have a uh, city and this is going to be the name of that uh, business so it's going to be business business uh dot city and then you're going to have uh, the region and then this is going to be a uh, business uh business so make sure i get the spelling right so business dot uh region so each business will have a region i believe we provided so let me just check one more time yeah each business has a region a city and all of that so where the business is located basically so i'm also going to provide in a description of that product a description of that business rather so uh business description maybe what the business does okay maybe in the front end there'll be a uh, uh, find use of that so this business or this the the description let me show you get the spelling right so business dot description okay so there is an s here so business the description so great so now that i have that i'm now going to provide in the logo of that specific business and the logo of that specific business will just be business uh this business dot 
logo okay make sure i get the spellings right so now owner underscore uh so let me just undo that owner underscore id which is just going to be the id of that uh business owner so it's just going to be owner dot id just like that and then we have email and then we have uh owner dot uh email just like that we're just going to email of that specific owner so we're going to also return the join underscore date okay and the join date is just going to be uh, owner dot uh, dot join underscore date uh dot str strf time okay and then you're going to just pass in the the parameter this can be percent sign this is going to be b and then percent sign this is going to be d and then percent sign this is going to be capital y so make sure you watch out for that casing or else you run into an error so what has to be done is we're going to return a dictionary the dictionary contains two main fields right the data field the data field is a dictionary that contains two main for the product that we have that in place let me explain to you what uh, this we have just done basically so we have it going to return a dictionary the user it has a two fields the status field which is going to be okay and then the data field the data field is another dictionary that consists of two other fields the first field is a product details field that consists all the the product details which is going to be all this information and then we have the business detail field which contains of the business name the city the region the description of the business like what the business uh, trades in the logo of that business the owner of the the owner the id of that business in our database the email of the owners of that business maybe you want to contact them and then the date with the that specific, specific business join the platform so that's basically it for that okay so now that we have the let's write the delete function for uh that so now we're just going to write the delete function so this is going to be uh up uh up uh, this is going to be uh up dot this is going to be up dot delete okay this is going to be delete and then what we're going to do is what you're simply going to do is write in here product uh products for slash uh and then also need to do for us to be able to delete a product right we need to know which product to delete and we in our database we're going to identify everything using uh the id in our database so we're going to request for that id and i've explained here what this basically now that we have that there so we have a route that is going to be route maybe for slash uh product for slash one so that one will be will mean the product with an id of one in our database product for slash two will be an uh product and id of two products for slash three will be a product and id of three so right so i'm going to write this uh, sync function here it's going to be def and then we're going to do we're going to call it delete underscore product okay delete product which is going to get id it's going to be of type int and then for for a user to be able to delete a product right you can delete a product that you didn't create or you can delete a product if you are not authentic like you have to know who you are in order for you to delete a product right because you don't want to be able to delete products that are not from your business so get current user this will make sure that the user currently user uh, currently uh logged in user is authenticated to is authenticated authenticated to make that request okay so that's what they're simply done you're just going to get the product id and the currently logged in user okay so we're going to make sure that the one who is deleting the product is the one who owns that business or the one who uh, has owns that product and is also authenticated so we need them to be logged in for, the, for us to be able to identify who they are and then from there we can be able to determine whether they are they are authenticate authenticated to perform the uh, action that they want to pro, uh, uh, conduct in this case is deleting the product right so you can delete a product unless you are the one who created the product and you are currently logged in so do you, do you, the reason why we need you to be logged in so we can identify we can know who you are and then from there we can determine whether we can we can allow you to delete the product or we cannot uh, allow you okay so i'm going to get the product with uh, that specific id so i'm going to await this process so what this line simply done on line one uh 285 what this simply does is get for us the product right so i'm going to get the business that's affiliated with that product so this is going to be uh await so i'm going to await this so going to be product product dot uh business okay create the product the business and then we're going to get the owner of that specific product so the owner is going to be await right await and then it's going to be uh business dot owner okay so we're going to get that space owner of that specific business uh, of that specific product so there's why we need the owner of that product is to authenticate it or to check if the owner uh, the currently logged in user is actually the one who owns that product in our database so if a uh, user is equals to owner means that they are authenticated to delete this product since they're the ones who uh, created this product in the first place or this product belongs to them so we're going to simply delete that 
and then that's that simply else we're going to return to uh, them uh, uh, a log in a HTTP error so I'm just going to come up here and I'm going to copy this and then we can just tell them that they are not authenticated to perform this ac uh, action they are not authenticated out sorry <laughs> it's difficult to pronounce this that not authenticated to perform this action okay that's basically so I'm just going to save that and uh, and um, if everything went fine and then you're just going to return here to the user return uh, dictionary status and the status is simply going to be a status of okay and then that simply means that everything is fine and now they can proceed into uh, deleting uh, that, that this just informs it that the product have been deleted and that everything is okay okay we can also return status code like a, a four a two or four a two or one i believe content not found or something like that i'm not really sure but that's basically it for how you can delete a product so let's test this functionality so let's just go back bring my terminal this way okay we are still have that running so i'm going to stop this and then clear my terminal since i didn't have the reload functionality then this would to reload automatically that's why i had to open this manually again so come back here and then try to refresh our site now great you can see now we are not uh, logged into our system so if you go into product uh this one add new product and then i try to authenticate i need to be logged in in order to uh, upload the product so i'm going to go secret and then authorize myself so now i'm um, that i'm logging i'm going to go to add new product try this and now i can just uh, get the, the details so i can just uh, come up here and you can see i need to provide in all details so i'm going to say uh, milk i uh, just know let's just go with milk and then category maybe uh grocery or something like that and i hope grocery is spelled like that uh, if i'm wrong correct me in the comments okay grocery i don't really know the spelling of grocery okay the original price you can say that's a hundred and then the new price is going to be 90 that's probably a 10 percent discount and then the profile profile uh, product image for now we can just uh currently uh, leave this out for now so i'm just going to remove this and then i'll in the next row we'll actually fix that error so if you can exempt the the the, the, the user from passing in that uh, field like the user won't be asked to provide that field on uh on making uh, on adding a product instead what we'll do is that we'll, the user will be able to use another upload product uh, image profile i mean product image route to able to log uh, to upload their product images so for now just bear with me in the next tutorial i'm going to try the functionality to update uh, the product and then i'll also fix these little errors and the uh, issues in, in our code okay so let me just execute this so you can see you got back a 200 error and then now we our product has a default product image for now so if you haven't yet uploaded a profile then a, a profile uh, a product image they need to be assigned the default profile uh, product image so great now you can see our di percentage discount is 10 percent has been calculated successfully um product is milk so now let's try again uh to let me just uh minimize this and then let me go into product get product and then i go to tray and then execute this you can see that i got back an internal server error so let's check where the uh, the error is so i'm just gonna bring this here you can see a uh, query object has no attribute fetch related so let's see where the error is so let me just scroll up here probably somewhere up here so okay guys uh welcome back i just took suppose the video a bit and uh, i tried to solve that error because there's no uh, uh, there's no use for you guys to watch me solve that error here so what i actually did was actually a very silly mistake so this is actually not from total is or this is actually from query set okay so this will turn to as a query set or what what we call a query set in uh Total is RM, so this was going to return to as a query set, okay? So by default, query set doesn't have a uh, fetch related. So for us to be able to get the, f the related fields, this is actually a result of the uh, of what the error was uh, as a result of our uh, foreign key relationships, okay? So what we need to do in here, we need to say uh, query uh, set, just like that. So we just need to save from query set, and then we'll save that. And then if you go back to the front end, I'm just going to stop my development server since I didn't re use the reload plug, and then start it again. So if I go back to the front end and then I try to do this again, you can see now we get back the result, which is just going to be that uh, product. Okay, so great. So make sure that even here we have to use query set. This one, we got it correct. I don't know why I did that ever there. So sorry for that. Uh, now we can continue. Now let's try to get a specific product. So let me just go back to the front end. Now I'm just going to get a specific product. So I'm going to close this route and then get this. So I'm going to try this out. We don't need to log in here. So we just execute this. So I need to also provide an idea. Like a, oh, you need to provide in an ID. So I'm going to provide in an ID with a uh, with a value of one. So just execute that. Now we can see we got back an internal server error. The reason why we get back this error is probably uh, here. 
uh, let me just check the error before I jump into conclusion. Let's say product object has no attribute fetch uh, prefilled. So uh, I don't have any prefilled here. So let me just try to save it properly and then try to uh, restart again. So uh, what I need to do is uh, we can just get this product, copy this one here and then paste it in here. Instead, I think that will solve our error. So let me just paste that in there. Uh, save that and then uh, let me just restart my development server again so i'm going to close this and then restart my development server so Control c clear the terminal and then start the server again okay so i'm going to go to the front end and then in the front end i'm going to try to execute this so we got back the same error and it says that uh, a business has no attribute description so make sure that the, the, the error here was that we can really also put in here our product here so we just have to also uh, provided in here again i don't know why it's designed like that but uh just have to provide in, in here again that's why in the beginning i did it but i don't know why i actually changed it again but you have to provide it in here okay so they say that the business does not have a description so let's go to the models and then let's look for business so let's check okay the business is actually called business underscore description so i'm going to get that and paste it here mm, save that hopefully i don't have any error so i have to start myself again since i didn't use the reload flag okay so make sure that you start your server again if you didn't use the reload flag okay because uh, it crashes on my pc whenever i use a reload flag okay so now you can see we got back that details so you can see this the status the data of the of the given products so you can see the product id is one uh the product name is milk and then grocery I don't know that's the spelling and then the original price a new price and then the discount is 10 percent the date was uploaded and then the product uh image which is also the default image of that specific product okay then you can see the business name which is this is a one two three the city unspecified the region unspecified the description is now the logo which is just going to the, the the logo remember this logo right here is the same name uh here right and then we have the owner id and then the email that they used to register and then they joined this so they joined on the june uh, 20 which was the time when i recorded that video to create those users so great now let's try to upload uh, a profile picture of uh, of, uh, of a given uh, product right so we're going to upload a profile picture for an image with uh, uh, with a with an id of one so this is going to be i'm going to try this so i have to authenticate myself because i can't upload profile images for products that uh, are not mine right that, that i didn't uh, create in a database so i'm going to provide in an id an id of one so i'm going to select the picture so i'm going to go to my downloads uh sorry downloads and then let me try to see if i can get a picture here i really do not have much pictures on my pc but let me see if i can get one so uh let me just say this is actually from my one of my thumbnails for my youtube video okay so Oh, let's just use this one from pixel and then i'm going to open that so i'm going to open that and then i'm going to simply going to execute this so let's get there you can see the profile the uh, the uh, image has been uploaded and this is the image URL. so i'm just going to copy this and again this is going to be the same picture since you have used the same picture throughout so you can see you got back the same picture so now if i go back to the, the products right so if i try to execute this again I should get back my profile image which is just going to be this uh you can see now the profile image of that product has changed and this name right here is the same as this one right here so you can see now you can we are able to upload the different product images so that's basically it for that so now uh, we have really the functionality to also be able to delete a product so let's try to delete a product so i'm authenticated let me try to delete a product that uh, i created so let me just put in here one and then i try to execute this it's going to delete successfully get it, we can get back the status of okay because i created that product so let me try to put in here two now that should return to as an error you can see 404 object doesn't exist which is actually true so now let me just try to um that's basically it for this so in next tutorial i'm going to write the logic to uh delete the different to update the different products to update the the the, 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 the information of the businesses and also we're going to write the logic to yeah i think that's basically that's what we'll do in the next tutorial just write the uh, focus on how to update these different uh, products and the business information for, for example if i go back to my front end and i try to get a businesses info right so if i go back here uh try to get in the business info let me try this and then execute this we can see that uh actually our um, let me just let me just get uh not this one let me just get the one for a specific product now we don't have any product in our database so we have to add a product and then try to uh, uh try to get that product the reason why i want to show you is that there are some fields within our product 
uh, our, our, our business information we can see like the city and the region right there the, by default they are unspecified so we want to provide the user the ability to specify these things right or to, uh, to be able to update the cities and the business information and also the, to update the different product information on our data piece okay that's basically it for this tutorial so guys if you enjoyed this tutorial so far give it a thumbs up subscribe to my youtube channel and uh, hit the notification bell so you can stay updated with all future videos on my channel so thanks for watching uh, see you in the next one. Keep safe.